Marrakesh, a city of history and culture, of life and energy, a city of riads and souks, of music and laughter. There's so much to see and do here, but if you're touring around Morocco like us, you might only have a day or two to explore Marrakesh. So how much can you experience in that time? We're Chris and Lydia. Join us to find out. Marrakesh is located in central western Morocco, strategically positioned between the desert, mountains and Atlantic Ocean. In our previous video, we journeyed to Marrakesh from the south, navigating the hair-raising Tizi and Tichka Pass over the high Atlas Mountains, with its breathtaking lookouts and occasional landslides. Upon arriving in Marrakesh, we settled into our traditional Riyadh accommodation, right in the heart of the old Medina. From there, we ventured out through the winding alleys to Jamar Elfnar, the city's main square. Historically, this square served as a marketplace and gathering place for locals, although these days it caters more to tourists. In the evening, we found a nice peaceful rooftop bar with views over both the square and the beautiful sunset. We have a busy day planned today, so we woke up at dawn. After watching the sunrise from the rooftop terrace of our Riyadh, it was time to explore the sights and sounds, smells and tastes of Marrakesh. It's morning time, 9 o'clock in the morning here in this main square in Marrakesh. People are just opening up their stands and stalls, but it's relatively quiet at least compared to last night. Still have to watch out for these motorbikes rushing past all the time. We're on a walking tour of Marrakesh this morning. First stop of the day, we're going to go to the palace um, before it gets too busy there. But just walking through. Oh, hang on. Here she is. What do you say? Take a photo with my American dress. Oh, yeah, let's have a look. Just <laughs> Beautiful. Lovely sunny day yet again. Yeah, we've been blessed with the weather. Yes, we have indeed. This is the best time of day. It is. Because it was crazy, well, it was there. crazy busy last night. There's motorbikes everywhere. <laughs> Apart from Jamar Elfnar Square, the most visited tourist attraction in Marrakesh is Bahia Palace. Although the city of Marrakesh is over 1,000 years old, Bahia Palace is relatively new constructed just over 150 years ago. The palace was initially built as the residence of the Grand Vizier, the chief advisor to the Sultan, and was later expanded by his son, Bu Ahmed, who also became a powerful Grand Vizier himself and wielded great influence over the country's affairs. The name Bahia means brilliance and no expense was spared in expanding and lavishly decorating the palace. It features lush gardens, intricately carved stucco plaster walls, cedarwood ceilings, mosaic tilework and marble floors. The palace served as a symbol of wealth and power. After passing through the Petit Riyadh garden and several beautifully decorated halls, we entered the Grand Courtyard, the largest open area in the palace. This impressive space, with its marble floor and columns, carved wooden arches and stunning mosaics, served as a private area for Beau Ahmed's four wives and 24 concubines. We exited the courtyard into the Grand Riyadh Garden, a larger version of the one we saw earlier. These gardens once provided a cool, peaceful retreat for the palace residents, though with today's crowd starting to build, it felt far from tranquil. There are 160 rooms in Bahia Palace, but only a small percentage are open to the public. We noticed that the rooms are all empty, 
After Bu Ahmed's death in 1900, the palace was looted by his wives and concubines and stripped of all possessions by the Sultan. Later, it served as the residence for French colonial administrators during the Protectorate era. Today, Bahia Palace is a preserved historical site, showcasing Morocco's architectural elegance and offering a glimpse into the opulent lifestyles of its former elite. After leaving Bahia Palace, we made our way through the Medina, the old town of Marrakesh, winding our way through the many souks, marketplaces scattered within the Medina. The souks are a maze of small shops offering a wide variety of goods, from spices and textiles to ceramics, leather goods, jewellery and even musical instruments. We're back out of the palace now and we're just walking through some of the other ways. Um, watching out for the motorbikes as we go. It's not only motorbikes that you have to watch out for. You're pointing at every stand. I know, <laughs> I know I'm going, that's funny. I love it. <laughs> they sell them with the testicles on, do they? I do. <laughs> I saw them. So we're going to visit uh, an old Quranic school from dating back to the 14th century. Wow, look at that. Arches. The Ben Yusuf Madrasa is a stunning 14th century Islamic school was once the largest madrasa in Morocco. Its beautiful central courtyard is ornately decorated with mosaic tile work, carved cedar wood and intricate stucco detailing. At its centre lies a large reflective pool and at one end stands a beautifully decorated prayer hall, complete with a carved marble ablution basin. The courtyard served as a gathering and study area for students, a peaceful space where they could read, discuss and reflect on their studies in an open air setting. Surrounding the courtyard on the second level are small dormitory rooms, with a madrasa capable of accommodating upwards of 800 students. Ben Yusuf Madrasa was named after a powerful 12th century Sultan who expanded Marrakesh, fortified the city walls and supported the development of religious and educational institutions. He commissioned the nearby Ben Yusuf Mosque, one of the oldest and largest mosques in Marrakesh. Within the bustling souks, skilled craftsmen work in special areas dedicated to traditional leatherwork and metalwork. Leather artisans shape and dye leather by hand, creating items like slippers, known as babushes, using techniques passed down through generations. Meanwhile, metalworkers skillfully craft intricate items such as lamps, trays and teapots, hammering out detailed patterns and designs.
Watch out, watch out. Everybody. Watch your feet. What did he say? He said, good morning, good luck. <laughs> good luck, I hope you find your way home. <laughs> Olives after olives after olives after olives after olives. After olives. After olives. <laughs> 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 it's so, so fresh and juicy. What are you going to get, Chris? You're going to get the chili one, slow it. Nice and spicy, but not hot, hot. So. <laughs> Oh, that smells so good. I could smell we were approaching Mishui Alley before I could see it. This famous culinary street is known for its traditional Moroccan roasted lamb called Mishui. Local vendors in Mishui Alley specialize in a centuries old slow roasting technique where entire lambs are slowly cooked in underground clay ovens. This is ovens here so they heat them like for a couple of hours then they clean all the ovens, then they dip or then they put like whole sheep inside. As you see that guy here, whole sheep like inside it. Okay. Yeah, they put the whole sheep in, and they close it. Then they put the clean. So it means there is no air can go inside. So they keep only the heat in. Okay. So when it is ready, so that guy here can give you as much as you want, kilo, half kilo, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And piece of bread with the cumin and salt. Oh, we're right next to the main square. Okay, so what's on the menu? We've got lamb, we've got beef feet, sheep head, hmm, lamb brain. I think I'll stay with the lamb. So this is half a sheep's head, is it? Yeah, half <laughs> 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 All right. When in Morocco? Yeah. What part do you eat? Uh, here is a tongue. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It should be. It should be whole in places. Like. <laughs> uh, is it good? <laughs> No, I think I just, I think I might order some normal lamb. Although the aroma was tempting, lamb's head wasn't quite to our taste. So Lydia and I set off into the winding alleyways of the Medina to find a lunch spot more to our style and maybe do a bit of shopping along the way. We stumbled upon a spice market. It smells beautiful. <laughs> It's the cumin is the main smell that I can smell at the moment. And 35 different spices up to there. Ras al honey. Everything inside. My friend? Yes, you can smell the lavender. You have roses, kalmai, sage. It's pretty. That looks like a nice place for home. Okay. It's a lovely spot here, overlooking the spice markets, it was a good find. Look at the colour of those drinks, one's orange and carrot, and ginger and turmeric I think, and Lydia's is avocado based. Meals have arrived. We've got Lydia's monkfish, 
salad, that looks lovely. Colourful and fresh. I had lamb chops, bits and pieces inside a zucchini, olives and capsicum and some cheese. And then we had a calamari salad to share. What a spread! This is the best meal I've had in Morocco in the whole two and a bit weeks we've been here. Make my wish come true. <laughs> this is my genie. Yeah. I want one with a genie in it. <laughs> that costs extra. Uh. This is Reda. <laughs> hey, he has a beautiful shop. Like you see, we are in Hubu Sukri. This is one of the best Hubu's in Marrakech and is very famous and you will come for all the people from Australia, Australia. Yes, yes. and anytime you come to Marrakech you will come with your shop like this beautiful people with me so you will come <laughs> thanks Reda time, you need to smile yeah, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> very well done thanks Reda you will very come. much nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, nice. okay. oh that sounds like a base doesn't it it is a base <laughs> Hello. I'm ready for a nos nos. <laughs> yes. It's I'm ready for a nos nos. It's our new coffee in Morocco. It's yes. called a nos nos. Better than one nos nos? What? Two nos nos. <laughs> or does that make it a nos 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 nos? Nos nos nos. <laughs> No snai. <laughs> it seems that no matter how lost you get in Marrakesh Medina, eventually all roads lead to Jamar El Fna. Beside the square stands the iconic Katubia Mosque with its 77 metre high minaret, a true landmark of Marrakesh. This is the Ketubia Mosque in Marrakesh. It's a local landmark and dates back to the 12th century. It's one of the largest mosques in the country and definitely the largest structure in Marrakesh itself. Fun fact is that it's illegal to build any structure taller than the minaret from this mosque. So if you ever get lost, you can always look up and find your way back here. As the afternoon wore on, we took a short drive beyond the old city's red clay walls, which give Marrakesh its nickname, the Red City. Our destination, the Jardin Majorelle Gardens in the new town of Marrakesh. This is the lineup of people. Get tickets to go inside the gardens. So the Majorelle Gardens seem to be a very popular spot to come on a warm Moroccan day in Marrakesh. Looks like a big garden. Plants from all the corners of the earth here. Thousands of people come here every day so it's a very popular spot. They also have a Berber museum here, so we're going to go and visit that first and then have a walk around the gardens. There's Jacques Margel, and this is the Berber museum. We've just come out of the museum. Uh, we couldn't film in there, but it was it was an interesting museum. It wasn't that big, so we got through it quite quickly. Lots of uh, pots and utensils used by the Berber people, um, as well as some jewellery, 
um, costumes that they used to wear and musical instruments. So it was, it was worth coming and so having a look at it. And now it's time just to have a quick look around the gardens and relax a little bit before we head back into the chaos of the Medina. We're checking out all cactus, or cacti, as they call them. I've never seen so many cactus, cacti in my life in one spot. Jacques Magel must have really loved cactus. Cactus, cacti. I never realised there were so many different types. No, it's cacti. I don't know whether it's me getting older, but I'm enjoying gardens a lot more than when I was 18. <laughs> and birds. Birds, so yes. Some, all of a sudden you start noticing birds and plants. It's just a thing that happens. <laughs> it, all of a sudden it creeps up on you and you're like, when did I start enjoying gardens and birds? <laughs> Five o'clock crew are all lining up. The line's not so big for five o'clock. This evening we went for a romantic dinner at a nearby rooftop restaurant recommended by our Riyadh manager. It was a great choice. We enjoyed live music and views of the Ketubia Mosque. The waiter made sure we were comfortable as we sipped on unique pre-dinner cocktails. Chocolate! Thank you so much! That's lovely. <laughs> Unless I'm toasty now. <laughs> and look at your cocktail. The, what is it? The Marrakesh Mule, is it? Marrakesh Mule. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, Cheers look at that. Tea. I've got something else that's Medina Sunrise. I've never drunk a cocktail out of a tea cocktail. No. Anyway. Do I sip this out? No, I don't think so. Just one minute. Thank you. Okay. Don't open, don't open. Oh, rice. One, two, three. Oh, voila. Beautiful. Thank you. So I've got a five hour cooked beef. That's not a tagine. No, no, it's not. It's something else. Well, what's yours? Yours is salmon. Salmon. After dinner, we return to Jamar Elf Nar. The square really comes alive at night with food stalls, performers, and music. The energy builds as the crowds gather. It's an experience that can't be missed. down here. Everybody is trying to get you to come into their stand, come into their little food store to eat. 
Australia. Oh, we've already eaten, so we're just looking. You look skinny, you can tell. Ah, thanks, mate. Skin it in it. Thank you very much. That looks good too. I've sheep head, I've made beef, I've tried I've had enough sheep head for one day. Thank you very much. We've had dinner already, so we're just looking. Yesterday, I saw you today. Oh, did you? You saw me yesterday? I wasn't here yesterday, so. My dream. Chaos. It's an experience, so. What are these nuts, are they? Isawera, no, thank you. Snails, no, no, no. I look, I watch, I watch, but I won't eat. <laughs> These are all snails. Those look like nice restaurants over there, up there. You can have a look and see. It's a bit crazy down there, so we thought we'd escape it. Come up here. People watch for a bit. Thank you for joining us on our busy day in Marrakesh. If you enjoyed watching, please hit like and leave us a comment to let us know where in the world you're from. And if you're new here, please hit subscribe as we still have more of Morocco to come. Bye for now.